Hi folks. You know, one of the things I love talking about is uh, ancient Rome and Renaissance Florence. What's the connection? You know, when the Renaissance, quote unquote, is happening in Florence, let's just say the 1400s, you know, the Roman Empire fell in the West a thousand years before that. So how could these people a thousand years later even care about this old civilization? Well, it is important to note that this was still Italy and there was Roman ruins all over the place. So there was a little bit of a memory that was left behind. But a big part of the Renaissance, besides the art, is also all the old Roman literature that's quote unquote being rediscovered. Now, a lot of this literature was stacked away in monasteries, uh, a few various libraries here and there. But I feel like during the Renaissance era, during the Renaissance era, this literature was getting more and more into the hands of secular folks. People that weren't necessarily uh, affiliated with the nobility and also people that weren't necessarily uh, affiliated with the church. So people started rereading it in a new way. And in some ways, I'll give you one example, uh, the famous Petrarch. Petrarch, who's often considered, you know, the godfather of the Renaissance in Italy, uh, was really the first to start looking at some of these individuals from antiquity, like Cicero, some of these authors that were often viewed as authorities, like one-dimensional characters that you cannot question. Well, he was really the first one to look at Cicero and read some of his letters, he even discovered a few of them, and say, you know what? Cicero was just a person too. He's not flawless. He was a product of his times. He, uh, he's, he was a human. He's not perfect. He shouldn't be viewed as perfect. So that might seem so simple to us, but it was such a groundbreaking thought at the time. But nevertheless, a lot of people start getting addicted or attracted to the old ancient Roman texts. Now you might ask, what are the names of some of these? Like I said, Cicero's writings. He wrote a lot about republics. He did not like Julius Caesar. He loved the Roman Republic. Um, uh, the, the historian Livy, Tacitus, Sallust, um, Plutarch. I mean, there's so many of them. So a lot of these books start coming back and they're being translated and rewritten and things like that. And there's really a buzz around them in Florence here. And one of the reasons is Florence is an actual republic. It's just a city state. Italy is not a unified country at this time in the late 1300s, 1400s. Florence is a little tiny merchant republic. So they're living in a world where you have a monarch in France and a monarch in Spain and the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor and feudalism is still very prominent out in the countryside. That's for sure. But they live in a republic. So when they're reading Cicero's writings about being a citizen and an active citizen of the republic, it really resonates with them. They feel like, wow, I can relate to this guy. Even though this guy's been dead for 1400 years, I can actually relate to him more than I can relate to the Pope, per se. Now, it's not to say that these people wanted to get rid of their Christianity. Many of them were very devout, but they had a little bit more of an, an open mind that this civilization exists. Rome was obviously grand technologically. It was, in many cases, many of the people during the Renaissance viewed Rome as being technologically superior to what they were living in now. You didn't have people that could recreate the Pantheon or the Colosseum or things like that yet. So there was this fascination with not only getting to learn about the civilization of Rome through all these new rediscovered texts, but also they could relate to it. I often describe it like this. Nowadays, um, you know, when I'm talking to my students, people get into stuff. Maybe you're into sci-fi. Maybe this person's into the Marvel world or comic books or uh, I, I'm into fantasy or Game of Thrones. or It's kind of like a whole little universe you can escape in. In some ways, as, Rome, as more and more Roman texts begin popping up and copied and sold at the bookstores, it becomes a type of fad of sorts. Now, albeit a fad for the middle and upper classes and people who are literate, but Rome represented this kind of whole new reality of sorts. It was this, and of course they idealized it. It was this world of no kind of thought police like the church. There was no nobility. There was equal citizenship amongst the male citizens. And it was something different. And it was like a world you could escape into. And many of them saw it as a superior world to what they lived in. So a big part of the Renaissance is trying to recreate some of the values of ancient Greece and Rome. Yes, through artwork, but also through literature as well as in politics. 
So there's a lot more to it here. But ancient Rome really resonated with these individuals, and I'm absolutely fascinated with that. Thank you, folks. Take care.